Have you ever wondered what it means, the word chemistry? Sometimes we talk about chemistry in science, chemistry in the lab, but what does that mean? So this will be the first videos on a series of videos explaining what chemistry is, but also answering questions you may have. So as we go along this video, if you have any questions related to chemistry, put your questions in the comments below so that I can use your comments to create new videos for you. My name is Anne Faber. I've been teaching science for more than 25 years, and I decided that this year was a year where I will start to putting videos for my students, but also other students and teachers wanting to have ideas and tricks on how to teach different topics on chemistry. I do love several other uh, fields of sciences, and you'll see on this channel, I will talk about astronomy, physics, and a few other topics. The idea here is that we're here to learn because once we understand better the topics, then it's so much easier to appreciate our classroom. Now, as we go along, this is the first video that I'm doing on chemistry. I'm going to follow along. There you go. It is a textbook, fairly new actually, from McGraw Hill about chemistry. They have amazing textbooks, and I'm going to be following along what they are doing, uh, making sure that it follows. Uh, the program in the United States. And second, it can also follow some of the topics that we learn in Canada. So the order will not be the same for both countries. And if you are from another country, the idea here is that the topics is what is relevant here. So the first lesson today is about what is chemistry and its individual part. As you can see here, I have a molecule, which is carbon dioxide. A molecule we often speak about and here i have you have one of my students we are that is measuring here the mass of one of the ingredients because if i remember well we were doing for this one here was 11 toothpaste uh, 11 toothpaste experiment and they were uh, measuring what was needed there perfect so the first information that we need to look into is what is chemistry? So here it's a bit more definition so far, but I'm, I'm going to bring some ideas as we go along. So first of all, chemistry is studying matter. When you say matter, what does it mean? I'm going to give you some examples. So here in my class, I often uh, work with metals because it's something we, are, are, we see around us. So here we have brass, we have aluminum, and if you think of a brass pipe, I also have here a cast iron and I have a copper pipes. These are made of different metals, but it is part of what matter is all about. Matter can also be complex. So here I have, uh, let's see, this is called in English, uh, pumpkin seeds. There you go. We eat pumpkin seeds for protein and other minerals for our body. If you think about it, we have often, so we have vinegar, so matter comes as a liquid as well. Matter can be specific chemically. So here, when I teach science in grade 10, we talk about science, uh, about uh, acids and base, and we have Tums here. We use it to neutralize acids. It's something that is made by humans. But you can also find this composition in specific rocks. This is called, uh, this is made of calcium carbonate. And we can find calcium carbonates in shells, in, the, in the different organisms in uh, the ocean, for example. And indeed, can, uh, matter can also be uh, a gas when you breathe in and breathe out we are inhaling and exhaling a gas. So matter is made of different type of substances. And what is interesting about chemistry is that those different, different matter can change. They can change when they, they are put together. They, are, they can change if uh, we mix them with different substances. When we increase heat, a whole, whole bunch of things can happen. And on top of that is when we study the change, the changes in what's happening to matter, we can measure the differences in what happens. And this is what is interesting. And that's, that's what makes a lab or all the different labs that we do in a classroom interesting. And indeed, so if we talk about chemistry, it's amazing, but what is science? So chemistry is a field of science, but science is, is a, 
science, you could say, is, is a field of um, interest where we ask questions, we have a hypothesis, and then we said, okay, how can we figure out the answer to my question based on my assumptions? So for example, we can have, let's see, someone could take it. So here we have a piece of copper pipe. Someone could say, okay, so let's see if I can change this a little bit. We have a piece of copper pipe here. What is the pressure that this copper pipe can take? What is the volume of water that this water pipe can carry? So this is the question. We can have a hypothesis. The hypothesis here for this one could be, um, I don't have the units, but here it could be how uh, the, pre the water pressure. You can also have, because of the diameter, the flow of liquid happening there. And in order to answer those questions, we need what we call the scientific inquiry process. The, here what we have, the scientific inquiry process is the steps we need to take to answer questions. Now, the reason why the inquiry process can be specific, it follows a certain structure. It's because we want to be able to repeat something similar. So for example, I was talking about the copper pipe. If you have a pipe that we sell at Home Depot, the plumber want to be able to use a piece of pipe and it will know what it can do because it has some specific characteristics. How do we know that? Is it because we've done experiments about the thickness of the pipe and how big the pipe is to know what we can do for this. So it is a repeatable, uh, repeatable way of using this piece of pipe. For the same reason, if I have a hard burn, we have here the Tums, we have, they're made of tablets of calcium carbonate. And what happened is they're not too big, not too small. And we know it will do what we can think of. But for that, we need a repeatable process so that we can check to see if the science work. Because otherwise, how would we, we how would we be able to, to know, okay, we want to do something, but I want to be able to predict all the time what happens. Not too far from where I live, there's a, a Ford plant where they create uh, Ford vehicles. We have a chain of, uh, a chain to build the cars. What happens is that it follows a process. So every cars that come out of that uh, factory are similar. Sometimes some are better than others. Sometimes there's some glitches here and there, but usually they do the process. So as the line of building the vehicle is uh, well done, then the sources of errors are getting smaller and smaller. And that's why from that plant, we have a good idea that as we go along, these are all getting better and better. And that's why sometimes a company will have the same models over several years. And because they know it works, they know they've tested a few things and it works nicely. So that's what science is all about. Now we can have science overall, but let's see if I can, uh, let's see. So there's different kinds of science. We have what we call pure sciences and we have applied sciences. So here for this uh, first bits about chemistry, uh, chemistry here, we work with substances that are that have definite compositions and these, this, these, this matter, they're called chemicals. And matter is a substance with a mass and has a volume. So this is what matter is. We are taking different matters. We are putting them together to do something we want. And that's kind of interesting. Now, the two types of science they work with, if you have a pure science, it's you're using the resources available to build the knowledge for the sake of understanding building. So for example, you may have a chemist that will look at how, for example, we have a concrete, for example. When you put concrete together, there's a chemical reaction. The scientists will look at how the, uh, the concrete and cement will work together so we can build a bridge. The applied sciences will be using the resources available to solve a specific problem. So you want to build a building, you want to build a bridge with the concrete, you apply the pure sciences to do that. An example of uh, another pure science is biochemistry. 
So how is chemistry working in a human body, for example? So here we're going to look at specific resources that we have so we can understand what happens. After a while, there'll be the applied sciences where if we have a new medication that works, we know it's been tested and it's safe for people, then we can find a way to create that, uh, to use that molecule, that matter, to create medicine that we can sell at the pharmacy. That is what we call applied sciences. Applied sciences could be engineers, technicians, uh, there are all electricians, all the trades, we, they are using what we know to solve problems for society. So these are two parts and the difference between the two. Perfect. The next part that is useful, part of here is the idea that uh, what is a theory? So in science, when you think of pure sciences, we are looking at the theory, which is a way to explain a natural phenomena. I mean, not, there you go, to achieve a natural. Let's try this again. So what is a theory? A theory is a way to explain a natural phenomena which has achieved through observations, data collection, and investigation. So you have, you have your questions, you have your hypothesis, you use a scientific inquiry process to gather data, and then you have a conclusion. And if the conclusion is repeatable and it solves something specific, then you have a theory based on what you have. Many theory becomes part of our day-to-day -day lives because we know it works. However, if there are some theories that uh, we're doing the best we can from what we know. So if you think of, uh, for example, aluminum, aluminum is a metal. But if you take uh, one aluminum atom, which is very, very small, it's so much harder to study because it is so small. So that's why we have the theory of the atomic uh, theory, which is how does an atom behave? If you have so much more, overall, we know how aluminum works as a metal. But there's a theory about how the atoms are working, a theory about the Big Bang, a theory about different ways that we know should work based on what we know. In math, there's a lot of theory and theorems and so on. But here in science, we base theory on what we can observe. Now, if you think of science, because here I'm doing the first lesson of the first unit, there's a few things we can think about as well. First of all, so let's see, we need to be able to find characteristics of matter. So if you look at characteristic, we have two that we know. One is the mass. The mass is an amount of matter. But also there is what we call the weight. Now, often in scientists and people over the world can uh, confuse mass and weight. But what is interesting about the weight is that it's the measurement of mass of a quantity of matter affected by the gravitational field. So here what we have to say is that mass should be the same everywhere in the universe, on the moon, on Mars, on Earth, because it's the quantity of matter. The weight, however, can be different. So our weight here on Earth will be different than your weight on the moon or Mars. And the reason for that is that the gravity of the moon, Mars, and Earth are different. So often we mix the both here, both of them. But when we think of our weight, this is how, this is what the, the scale is telling us. Now you'll see as we progress in the different topics of science, you notice that sometimes weight and mass can be interchanged because of cultural, uh, cultural how can I say that? The idea that words at some point merge and people know what they are. In society, nothing to worry about. However, sometimes if you think to, about, if you talk to scientists, you have to be precise. Very nice. And this is something to keep in mind. On this, this is the first topic I wanted to share about, about chemistry. We talked about, uh, let's see about matter, what it was. So let's see. We talked about the definition of chemistry, what it was, some vocabulary. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have noticed that you want to clarify something, put your questions in the comments below. If you are thinking of something, 
put your questions in the comments because I use them to create new videos for this channel to make sure that my audience and you can better understand it. Because once you understand, then you can apply it better. And being able to take a topic that you understand in knowledge and be able to apply it, that's what brings a transformation, transformation of understanding the topics. You know what you're talking about. You understand what's going on, and then you can go further in your study. You can, do, you can go further into your teaching. On this, if you've enjoyed this video, so uh, in this video, put uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. And I'm going to put here a link to something you will enjoy.